Our first grouping of biological molecules are the carbohydrates. Let's review these together. The carbohydrates include the sugars and the starches, and in terms of physiology, these provide a really quick source of energy that can be used in the body. All carbohydrates have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and they all have those atoms in a one to two to one ratio. Probably the most familiar carbohydrate is glucose, and glucose has a chemical formula C6H12O6, so twice as many hydrogens as carbons and oxygens. And carbohydrates can be um, connected together into more and more complex structures. The smallest carbohydrate that we can talk about is a monosaccharide, also known as a simple sugar. Glucose is an example of a simple sugar. So right here in the image, what we're looking at up here at the top, this is a schematic of glucose, a glucose molecule. And if we take two glucoses or, or two monosaccharides, just generally, if we take two monosaccharides and connect them together, what we would form is a disaccharide. If we connect more and more, uh, sugar subunits, then what we would end up with is a polysaccharide. And the polysaccharides that you've probably heard of before are starch, cellulose, and glycogen. In this class, we will be focused primarily on glycogen because that's the form of, um, that's the type of polysaccharide that is present in the human body. These others are more so present in plants. So glycogen, let's just take a look at the structure over here on the side. Glycogen has a very characteristic branched structure. It's, con it's um, made up of a whole bunch of glucose units that are linked together, but overall um, the structure, it's, it's more highly branched than starch or cellulose would be. So that's kind of a distinguishing feature of glycogen. How are all of these bonds formed between the different glucose subunits? There's a special type of reaction that allows these bonds to be formed. And let's review that type of reaction. So biological molecules, they are all, regardless of which of the four categories we're talking about, they are all built up by the same basic mechanism. They can be built by a dehydration synthesis reaction. And I'd like to just bring your attention up here. Let's take a look at these two glucose monomers for just a second. They're side by side. And what's being highlighted is this hydrogen on the glucose on the left and the OH group in the glucose on the right. And what can happen in order to join these two glucose molecules together, what can happen is that H2O group right there, the, the hydrogen from one molecule and the OH group from the other molecule, they can leave, they can join up together, they can leave in the form of water. And what will be left behind is a connection then between these two glucose molecules. So you can see that connection right here, it's just like a little bridge, all that's left is that one single oxygen and this is now called maltose. This is an example of a disaccharide. So the type of reaction that just took place up here is a dehydration reaction. It makes sense to call it that because these molecules are being dehydrated. They are getting a water group removed from them. So that's a dehydration synthesis reaction. Just the opposite of that would be called a hydrolysis reaction. So let's jump down to this example down here. Let's start with this starch molecule and let's suppose we want to split it in half so maybe break it down into smaller subunits in order for that to happen what would be involved is a water molecule would come over and attack that bond okay, so the water molecule would split in half um, well not perfectly in half it would split in two and part of it would go and attach to this uh, this subunit and part of it would go and attach to this subunit so the end result is shown right here we've just split the starch in two and that is called a hydrolysis reaction the name hydrolysis um, lysis always means to split and this is saying we're using water to split something and that's exactly what's happening so you'll need to know the difference between these two dehydration and hydrolysis reaction which one can be used to build larger molecules and which one can be used to break down molecules into smaller subunits and again, these reaction types apply to not just carbohydrates, but also our other three categories of biological molecules as well.